It makes you do bad things. The Keen Project started in 2013. I was racing for Brumos and they were not gonna do the full season. I ran the first four races with them. That was always the plan. And then after that, you know, they were like, all right, we're, we're done. And we knew that. So in early 2013, when I was still racing, I was like, well, if I don't pick up a ride, I need something to do. So I started a company called The Keen Project. And the first car for that was a backdate off of a 964 chassis. I'm still not done with it <laughs> four years later. Uh, and the Safari is one reason for that. But the Keen Project was always about a unique Porsche that I wanted for myself that I thought may be interesting to other people too as a package, a turnkey design or car. You know, I've spent a lot of time at Singer, spent time in a Singer before, and then we have an RWB also. For sure, I have been inspired by those guys to create something, I guess, like the Safaris of the Keen Project. I've also taken everything I've learned in racing and just kind of being around a Porsche since I was three years old. Having driven some really cool 911s, try to put some of that in to the safaris and the cars so they drive really nice too. They sound right, they feel right. You know, I respect Nakai and, and the guys at Singer 100%. They're both artists. I also love the design of things too. That's one thing that I'm probably most passionate about for the cars. So I picked up some rides actually in Ferraris and stuff in 2013 and then went on to continue racing for a couple more years. And I was working on the back date and it was taking forever. And my next car was always gonna be the Safari. And then finally, I just couldn't wait for the back date anymore. So I said, screw it, let's just do it. Let's do the Safari. Picked up an 81 SC, actually local here in Atlanta. Went to work on the car. I'd already ordered the tires and stuff before I even bought the car. And, had all the plans and knew exactly what I was going to do. When I was buying the car, everybody was like, no, you're going to make people mad. You can't do this. This car, the car you bought is too nice. It was very much like, this is bad. Porsche had done it. You know, I knew the history of Paris to car. And actually the first Porsche 911 ever raced was Monte Carlo. I'd hung out with some of the guys when I was at Brumos that managed the East African Safari team, you know, in the seventies. I was like, I'm doing it. And now it's okay, or actually became very popular. You know, did the exact opposite of what everybody does with Porsches. We lift it up, put BFG tires on it. We don't do too much to the engine. We do more to the suspension and then a lot of cool stuff on the outside, like the bumper bars and the light pod. Comes in handy too at night when you need to see and if you run into something. Built my car right for a Ren Sport in Monterey Car Week shipped out of California like it was done in like a day and I shipped it out and then everybody was loving it pretty much people had built cars before but they were kind of more of race cars or they were tribute cars they weren't so much street cars that you could take off-road but also just drive around the street and enjoy like every day so that's what my car was kind of different for and then suddenly it made a lot of sense if you live in Atlanta or you live in LA or whatever you can drive the car around and hit potholes and stuff, and then you can take a dirt road. There's actually a really great dirt road off of Peachtree Road near Piedmont Hospital. Nobody really knows about. So it was a big hit out there, and then I had a buddy that drove my car inside 17 mile drive near Pebble Beach. We were sliding around, and you know he just said, "I gotta have one of these. You know, I want one." I'm like, "Well, I'm thinking about building them." So he said, "Let's do it." So that was the first customer car. So thanks, Alan. I just delivered the eighth one and I have 10 on order right now. It's only G body cars, so impact bumper cars. So anything from like 74 to 89. I prefer the three liter SCs and 3.2 Carreras. They need to have about a budget for uh, 90 to 100 grand, including the car. The work we do usually is about 60 grand. Donors can be about 30, 35 grand. So for about a hundred grand, you know, you can have a pretty cool 911. And they're all different colors, all crazy color, different materials and stuff on the interior. I really love like so many of the old Porsche factory colors. So I have a list of all the factory colors and we'll go over, but most of the guys are into that stuff too. And all the interior materials and stuff, we use 
factory Porsche stuff, but we'll go in Mercedes or Volkswagen. Like the 70s and 80s were like the shit <laughs> for like that stuff. And Mercedes was like in the 50s. They had some amazing stuff in the SLs and some are daily driven. Not many are washed much. And that's kind of what it's all about. Safari number four, Mike Pollock, he drove his across country. He drove it from New York to LA, as <laughs> something you might be familiar with. He's put 10,000 miles on his car. Alan's put 10,000 miles on his car. I have one guy that daily drives his. I get pictures of it parked at the airport in the parking deck down in New Orleans. It's kind of like baseball glove. You get it, it's all brand new and kind of stiff. And then when you're, you know, when you use it, it forms to your hand and you get really comfortable and kind of builds a character after I'm done with it. And the, they kind of almost get better and better and better. 9-11's been off-roaded for a long time, so it's kind of known. Our setup, you know, there's some road race stuff, and then there's some special off-road stuff like longer shocks and, and things like that. Yeah, we went through some learnings with the suspension and stuff. The great thing about a Porsche, it is like the perfect car to do this with because it's rear-wheel drive, but it still makes a lot of grip with the engine being in the rear. So you can have the fun and you can slide around as you would like a rear wheel drive car. You don't have that push like a C4 would have, but if you get in a mud hole and you start to get bogged down, you have a lot of weight over the rear axle and you know, you can get out. It's amazing what the cars actually can get through. And the cars being reliable, there's a huge market for them and they're just built so well. You can get them soaking wet, you know, the engine can get wet and things can get covered in mud and it'll still work, it'll still get you home. I jumped mine, I don't know if that's the craziest thing I've done. Nighttime and runs in national forest roads, you know, on the side of a mountain, on gravel roads, and again, pretend to be a rally car driver. In the middle of nowhere, you know, no cell phone, no guardrail, one and a half lane wide. Well, I've jumped it a lot, but there's one jump that I went off of and the car actually <laughs> like landed really hard, bounced back up in the air and shot flames out. It makes you do bad things. That car makes you <laughs> do bad things. Uh, that's why I can't have a motorcycle because it's just too, the temptations. The guys that want one, they usually reach out to me. They know, you know what the car is and kind of the, the process, a little bit of the process already. They have to find a clean donor car. These cars weren't really loved 15 years ago. So they were like $10,000 cars and they didn't get nice parts and they didn't get things fixed. So now when you buy a car, there's, they're kind of all over the place. They drop off the car. I kind of subcontract everything. So I work on the design with them of the exterior, of the interior. And then I've driven a lot of different 911s. So I kind of know my way around them a little bit and I'm driving the car the whole time, making sure it's running right, driving right. So when they get it back, uh, it's good to go. So I have different people around Atlanta uh, to do mechanics, fabrication, uh, body stuff, interior stuff, to just kind of bring the, the whole car together. And then I return it to them, turnkey, ready to go, ready to have fun. Got some exciting stuff coming though. Got a couple of little different things. I'm about to hopefully finally finish the back date. Gonna try to do eight safaris this year. There's three or four of them right now that pretty much all have all the mechanics already done. And a couple of those cars are a little something different. One or two cars is for a unique person or two. So there's some exciting stuff coming up. Really excited for this year. And really happy with what, you know, what the cars look like. And in the end, they're just a lot of fun and you know, just about driving and enjoying a 911.